In this video I want to demonstrate a method for solving problems that involve complex power and the power factor. In this example we're given a word problem. A power company generates uh, 100 kilowatts of power to supply an industrial load with 94 kilowatts. The transmission line has 0.09 ohms of resistance in it. If the power factor is 0.83 lagging, then what is the voltage across the load? Okay. Before we approach these problems, any of the problems that involve complex power and power factor, we need to keep a few things in mind. First of all, complex power, denoted as S, I put a little triangle over it. That convention uh, I'll be using in future videos likely is for denoting a complex value. And it's made up of two components, P which equals the real power, which is measured in units of watts, and Q which is the reactive power measured in VARS, which is volt ampere reactive. Okay? The units of complex power as a whole is the volt ampere. Um, you'll want to likely memorize these things, or at least understand how they work. If this value here is positive, if Q is positive, then you're dealing with a primarily inductive load. In primarily inductive loads, power is absorbed. It should be very familiar from the earlier investigations we've done in power that when the value for power is positive, that power is absorbed. And the case is the same here. Uh, if it's a negative reactive, then it's capacitive and power is supplied. Okay. Um, A couple of other things about power to note is that we all know real power is conserved. Additionally, reactive power is conserved. That means all of the all of the Qs should add up all the way around your um, circuit. Complex power is conserved, okay? Uh, but apparent power is not conserved, okay? So don't be fooled by that. In fact, that's why. Uh, when you look at a circuit, you see uh, the company power company supplies one amount of power, and the power at the other end seems to be less sometimes. Okay, um, but these the idea that these three are conserved is going to be to our advantage, and uh, the power factor is simply the cosine of the difference between the voltage and the current. Okay, at the at the source that you're interested in. Here's the algorithm that I use for solving these and it might be a little bit of an overkill but I'm finding that it's helping me to understand how to solve these problems and also preventing me from making mistakes. First thing I do is I draw a picture of the circuit. Even if it's a word problem I like to have a picture to look at. Then I draw the voltage and current on a complex plane and I draw the complex power on a different plane. I label all the known values under those two planes and solve for the unknowns, which oftentimes ends up being one of the equations that we were looking at just a second ago or some basic trigonometry. Okay? And because you have the triangles there, there are usually four or five different ways that you can sort of verify your solution. So the first thing I did was I read through the problem and drew a circuit. Okay, um, with everything that I know. The second step is I draw the voltage and current onto a plane. Okay. And all I need to be able to do this is I need to know is the current 
lagging or not, and that comes from the power factor. The power factor tells me that the current is lagging because the power factor is lagging. Now I don't know what V and I are, but that's okay. That doesn't stop me from drawing the picture. This is V and this is I. And I know that it's lagging and I know even what angle it's lagging at, right? It's theta. And theta I can calculate by taking the inverse cosine of 0.83. Because remember that the power factor is the um, it's the difference, it's the cosine of the difference between the voltage and the current. Okay, and so if you do that, cosine, inverse cosine, sorry, of 0.83, you'll find that that equals 33.9. Okay, next I draw my other complex plane. Now, I know that if current is lagging voltage, that the complex power, the reactive power, will be positive. Okay? These two pictures will always be mirror images of one another. Um, obviously, the magnitudes will be different, but the angles will be the same. Okay, so I know then I'm drawing S on a complex plane, but theta is exactly identical. Okay, this is real, this is imaginary. I happen to know that the real portion of S is 94 kilowatts, right? 94 kilowatts. And that gives me all the information I need to solve this entire triangle. Okay, I could give you, it's not necessary in this equation, but I could give you Q. Um, what I do need is S, okay, and I, I also like to usually draw this in here, S equals I, oops, equals uh, V I, I complex, okay, and I'm using the squigglies here for phasers and this for complex, um, because this equation right here is what relates these two graphs. Okay, So right now I can't solve this because I don't know V and I don't know I. So we're going to have to come up with another approach. But first let's, we can solve for, we can solve for S, right? Because we have a length of a side and we have an angle. So the cosine equals um, adjacent over hypotenuse and so the hypotenuse, which is S, equals the adjacent side, which is 94K over the cosine of theta, which we happen to know is 0.83. Okay, so plug in 94,000 divided by 0.83 and you'll get a number close to this 113,253 okay so I could say then that S equals 113,253 at an angle of 33.9 Okay, so this triangle is completely solved. Uh, we can't move forward without solving for V or I. Well, to solve for V or I, um, we have to get away from this triangle for a minute, and we have to remember that power is conserved. So we know the power that's being supplied, and we know that the power being supplied 
has to be the power being used. The power being supplied has to equal the power being used. That's the power at the load plus the power that's lost in the transmission line, right? If we have current and resistance, then we have some power being dissipated through that resistance. So we'll call that P uh, T for the transmission line. Okay. And why would I want to know that? Well, I know that P in general equals I squared R. So I need I to solve this equation. So I can use this equation to solve for I. Let's take a look at that. PS, which is known, equals PL, which is also known, plus I squared R. So then we get PS minus PL divided by R square rooted equals I. Okay, so that is the real power put out, 100K, minus the real power absorbed in the, trans in the uh, load, divided by the resistance in the transmission line, 0 0.09. And if you plug that into a calculator, you'll find that I simply equals 438.6 oops sorry getting ahead of myself here it equals 258.2 amps and that's RMS so we could now go up here and start labeling this thing I equals 258.2 at an angle of negative 33.9. Okay. Well, that's it, right? Now we have everything to solve this. We have this equation here has only one unknown, so we can solve for that un unknown. S equals V times the complex conjugate of I. So if we rearrange that, we'll get an equation that says V equals S over complex conjugate of I. Okay, and that's 113,253 at an angle of 33.9 divided by 258.2 at an angle of, remember it's the complex conjugate, so it's a positive 33.9. And when we divide this, these angles are going to cancel, so we end up just needing to divide the magnitudes, and this will give you the solution that V equals 438.6 RMS. Uh, and using the triangles, we could sort of go through and verify um, a bunch of this stuff. It, you can work the problems backwards and forwards now. We could solve for Q0 and take the tangent, um, and it would give us the power factor. Uh, this stuff should sort of work in, in an any direction that you that you use it okay and it really starts helping you get set up to be able to answer questions about power factor correction so I hope that's useful good luck